guys, it's Sheena from Teton Raptor Center and I'm here to give you all this week's patient update. Just like the last few update videos, we unfortunately don't have time to cover every single bird. However, we will cover some of our newer birds, some of our releases, and some of our birds in the flight barn. So let's go ahead and get started. I want to kick things off by highlighting one of our most recent releases. Here we have Ferruginous Hawk 88 going back to the wild in Farson, Wyoming. This bird initially came in after being struck by a vehicle and dealing with a small fracture in his shoulder. Moving on to our current patients, here we have Great Horned Owl 920, and this bird initially came in from Casper, Wyoming, and it has a broken ulna, so a small bone in its wing is broken, and luckily this bone is in really good alignment, so we don't need to do surgery, but she will have to remain in a wrap. Here she is about to get some fluids in her leg pit. That's where we give fluids in a bird. So here we've just got a close up view of you getting to see where exactly on the bird those fluids go into. And this is just for the initial rehydration process. And then here we have the bird getting her first meal with us on the second day that she arrived. Um, it's not very common that they're super excited about food. So oftentimes we have to entice them by putting food up against their beak and tickling their whiskers around their beak with it to encourage their beak to open. And then in some situations, if they still are not opening their beak, it requires manual for us to manually open their mouth and shove the food down into their throat. Of course, this is not a fun thing for a bird to endure. So the goal is to get them to self-feed on their own. Next up is Long-Eared Owl 910, and this bird had a broken humerus that we surgically repaired. Here he is on our exam table getting physical therapy, and Amanda is about to walk you through the physical therapy process. For doing PT, we usually go to the extent of where it goes to, um, when you meet resistance, hold it for about 30 seconds. I'd say in the last five seconds, you can maybe like, you know, flex it slightly more past that, and then let it relax, and then move on to the next joint. So same thing with the elbow. I'll hold the wrist steady and just pull down. And the pin is coming out there, so I'm not doing very much. I'm not like stretching it. Mm -hmm. Next up is Golden Eagle 86, and as you can see, this bird has now moved into our flight barn. He's in the largest space in the flight barn, so he does have free reign to get up to some of those higher perches. In this video, we had just finished flying him, so he was a little bit tired and hung out on one of the lower perches, um, but you can see um, just a nice slow-mo video of him hanging out on this lower perch. He is flying really well so far, so hopefully next week we can include a flight video of him for you guys. Next up is Swainson's Hawk 8-1 and this adult bird is doing really well after being illegally shot in Rigby, Idaho. The gunshot wound has healed and the broken bone in her ulna has also healed so we are planning on getting her back out into the wild over the weekend. Here we are doing a final round of blood work on her just to make sure that everything looks good and we did affix a metal band to her leg. Last but not least is American Kestrel 81, and this female is undergoing flight conditioning, so here we are in one of our larger enclosures encouraging her to fly. All right, that's all we've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I look forward to talking with you all next week. If you'd like to do your part to help keep wild birds wild, you can check out our website at tetonraptorcenter.org and make a donation. Bye!